when you get it, just say amen. Uh, Y'all still turn the page. Stop it. <laughs> Prophet lying. <laughs> Can we get a real one now? Amen. 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 Romans 15 and 4. It says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime was written for what? Our learning. Right? Yes. What are we talking about? What things are written? Things of the Lord. Things of the Lord. So make it real practical. Things that are in your Bible. Right? The record we have of so many authors who came or who existed to identify or to give us the information that's necessary so that we can come to a conclusion concerning our faith. Am I right? Some of the things we major on, God didn't mm -hmm. or doesn't. But one thing we can understand out of reading the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, God had a plan. And these things that was documented in scriptures were for our learning. What? Our learning. That what? What happens? What is the result of being properly trained? What's the results of being properly trained by the Lord? That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Patience means that we're consistent, we're steady, we don't get in a hurry. Some things that we don't know, especially in the culture, uh, uh, in the Western church or the Western society, we, we, we haven't learned how to uh, capture the art of being patient. Amen. If you ever understood the necessity of prayer, you show me a person that's given a prayer. I'm going to show you a person who normally, I know there's some basket cases, but normally the result of a person who has a discipline of prayer, you can see the manifestation of these things, patience and what? Comfort. Through the scriptures, through our diet, through our fixation on all the historical relevance we have in scripture, we can have what? Patience and what else? Comfort. Patience, which means I can wait for the evolution. I can wait for the delivery. I can wait on the manifestation of the promise that God has showed forth in the scriptures. Yes. Yes. Am I right? Yes. If I study to show myself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. I will have the manifestations of patience, comfort, and hope. Mm -hmm. So this morning I'm going to talk, I know it's Resurrection Sunday, I know it's Easter in some circles, but I want to talk about a lively hope. Yeah. You cannot bypass the system that God has established because it's been preset in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. If you want to get the benefits or the results or the manifestation of what's been encased and encoded in the scriptures, you're going to have to operate accordingly. Amen. No amount of weeping is going to bring it. Amen. No, no amount of uh, might. Amen. I mean, some of us have might, willpower. I'm going to get it done. All you got to do is think it, believe it. It's yours. I, I grew up on yes. that type of teaching. Uh -huh. Didn't include some of the necessary things that must happen to see our hope fulfilled. God is looking to have a people that are having their hope fulfilled. The dark day that the church is celebrating right now ended up with a lively hope. The three days and the three night, if it was a good Friday or a good Thursday, which I subscribe to, by the way, mm -hmm. three days, three nights wasn't Friday. Come on. Right. If you, come on, you can count it up on your own calendar. Right. Friday, Saturday. Oh, he was up on Sunday, so that's two. Okay, anyway. <laughs> but 
I don't try to wrestle with the scriptures right. to my own destruction. I don't try to self-promote my own thinking. You know, I don't ha have a horse in a race. All I know, he got up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He could have got up on Tuesday. Yes, he got up. <laughs> he got up. Yes. And he consecrated for us mm -hmm. a living, a lively hope. Yes. Oh, boy. Go to 13, verse 13. Consecrated for us. He, oh, his, his, I mean, all the wear and tear he went and he experienced by, before he even entered into the earth realm. He shed his deity. Seminarians and theologians call it the kenosis. When Philippians 2, it says he emptied himself. He emptied himself to come down to be able to be tempted in all the temptations that we experience. Right. Amen. He was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. This is the hope we have. I'm talking about a life and hope. This is the hope we have. So we know once you stay in a certain uh, silical atmosphere or cycles, you start. Uh, 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 embellishing yourself and, and, and pronosticating yourself, telling yourself, don't nobody know what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Because mm -hmm. the enemy understands. That's how he gets you. Yeah. If he can disconnect you from the whole, yes. he will have you. Uh, amen? Mm -hmm. So you got to understand, you cannot disconnect yourself from the whole and you cannot disconnect yourself from the whole counsel of God's word. It's through the scripture, not the scripture you like. Through the scripture, we have patience and comfort. Amen. 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 Yeah. Then he says, I'm not going to just let you have to understand it. The document itself, I'm not just going to leave you to yourself so you can have your own private interpretation. He says in verse 13, he says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in what? Believing. That you may what? Abound in what? Hope through the what? The power of the Holy Ghost. So I'm going to give you some historical relevance. But then I'm going to release my spirit in you to confirm what's written. The two are interconnected. They can never be apart, you know. You know, what God has joined together is not just a nice thing we pronounce over people getting married. He's joined forever. Yes. It's irrevocable. It's un, un, unimpeded. There's not a wedge to be set against the scriptures and the Holy Ghost. You need them both. Yes. Amen. 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 <clears throat> that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So I want to talk about a lively hope. I want to get you, see, because this church, uh, out of many, out of all the church, I'm not worried about the next church. I'm, I'm talking about this church, to tell you never this church. Yeah. See, this is the church you say you belong to. Yeah. And it's not your neighbor, not the people you know on your job. This church is the church you said you belong to. Right. I didn't go get you to bring you here. Hey Amen. I don't pull your arm to get you here. I don't do robocalls. <laughs> Hello, this is your friendly church here. Pastor Stephen Mom. And I see you've been through the doors a few times. And I want to offer you an opportunity to be blitzed with us. Now, you know what I said, blitzed with us. Mm -hmm. I don't get into that thing. Because if the Holy Spirit don't do the witness to your spirit, that's it. And I'm going to have to chase your unholy spirit when the Holy Spirit can't draw you. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's a hope. Jesus inaugurated the kingdom, flooded with hope. And the hope is supposed to abound in us. So when the, when the, dark, when the dark night of your soul comes and there's a canopy over you, that wants you to cast aside your confidence. That wants you to be weary and well doing. You have to tell yourself, ah, that don't belong to me. All right. Amen. My apostle showed me through Romans 15, 4, and 13. I got, and you need two to bear witness. There's your witness. 
I got the Holy Spirit inside of me. And he's bearing witness to his word. He's not going to bear, let me, let me help you out. He's not, he's not going to bear witness to your state of mind. He, he's, he's not going to, he's not, he, he will woo you, he will draw you, he will invite you, but he's not going to come down to you on your level. All right. The God I know, the Father I know, it's after I'm wiping my last tear mm -hmm. that I hear from him. I mean, some people, he's sovereign. He can do what he wants. Yes. Some people can hear him in the midst of crime. Yes. But I found out, and it's been a good record I've kept to myself, is when I'm at the end of myself, mm -hmm. that's when he's ready. Yes. When you're at the end of yourself, there's a little mixture going on. You still ain't done with what you're doing. And mm -hmm. You still got a little sipping and dipping, flipping and tripping, still doing some things underneath the table. Mm -hmm. He'll wait. Yeah. He's long patient. And you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And some folks trying to figure out, well, where's my deliverance? You're not done yet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. I can hear it. My ear is so acute, I can hear stuff when I'm talking to people. I'm like, I can hear it. When people talk to me, it's, I can hear so instantly. They lying. And I can point out some. I've had a conversation with some of y'all. And the Holy Spirit said they lying. They're covering up. They're not done yet. It doesn't mean that I'm some special God. No. It ain't got nothing to do with it. It's just my ear is tuned. Because there's a mission and a mandate on the house. And if, like I preface it, if you connected to this house, he's going to open my ear to hear things concerning you. Not to condemn you because if that was the case, I would tell you what I hear. So I'm not here to condemn you. I'm hoping sooner or later you will wake up and understand the hope that's been consecrated for you is locked up on the inside of you. And the designs that God has established you can participate because he's after you. He's after you. He's not, he's not even after your sin. He's after you. Yeah. Yeah.